Hi, now this is an excellent example that you might like to try if you want revision on the continuous uniform distribution. It's got conditional probability in and it's also got some of the basic ideas that you should know. So you might like to pause the video if you want to give these parts a go. You can always fast forward to any part that you're unhappy with just to check the work solution. Okay, well, what we've got here anyway is that the time in minutes that Elaine takes to check out at a local supermarket follows a continuous uniform distribution defined over the interval 3 to 9. And in the first part, we've got to find Elaine's expected checkout time. Now, before I start to do anything like this, what I would encourage you to do is to define your random variable. Quite often you'll get questions maybe that have, say, a capital letter which defines the random variable, like X for instance, but in this question there is no capital letter defining that random variable, so we've got to introduce it. So what I would say is we just say that let capital X okay, be the random variable write RV for short, okay, the random variable, and in this particular example it's going to be the time spent in minutes, okay, at the checkout. I'll just abbreviate it though to time in minutes. And uh, this random variable is distributed, so we'll just say where X is distributed as a uniform distribution. And some people use U and other people use R. R for a rectangular distribution. I'm going to use U though, okay? And the two parameters in here are these two here. 3 for the lower limit and 9 for the upper limit. Between 3 and 9 minutes. Now, not that you have to, but uh, I'm going to draw a quick probability density graph for this distribution. And it's going to look something like this, where we've got x there and say f of x here. And what we would have is a horizontal line like this, going between 3 and 9. This would be the 3 and this would be the 9. And it would be 0 outside that region. Okay. Now, this bottom value is often referred to as A, so A equals the 3, and this upper value here is often referred to as B. Now, in the first part of the question then, part A, we've got to find Elaine's expected checkout time, E of X as we often call it. And you should be familiar that for a uniform distribution, E of X is always the midpoint between A and B. So in other words, it's A plus B divided by 2, a formula that you should be familiar with. So in this example, it's just going to be 3 plus 9, all divided by 2. 12 divided by 2, which is clearly 6. All right. Now we'll have a look at parts B and C now. Okay. So in part B, we've got to work out the variance of the time taken to check out at the supermarket. Now the variance var x for short, okay, is given by the formula b minus a all squared divided by 12. And again, you should be familiar with this particular formula. And for this example then, it's going to be 9 minus 3, all squared, all over 12. So we've got 9 minus 3, which is 6. 6 squared is 36. 36 divided by 12 is 3. So there's our variance. Now, in part C, we've got a probability to work out. We've got to work out the probability that a lane will take more than 7 minutes to check out. So for this, this is going to be the probability that x is greater than 7. Now to work out the probability that x is greater than 7, we need the area, because that represents probability in a probability density 
graph okay now probability that x is greater than 7 if I was to draw the line x is 7 in here okay let's just put that in there that's 7 say let's put the 7 up the top here because I've not got much room below here but we're looking for this area here so the probability that x is greater than 7 is going to be essentially the height times the width now we should also know that the area complete area in this rectangle here comes to 1 because it represents all the probabilities and that means that because this width here is 6 units then this value up here has got to be 1 sixth 1 sixth multiplied by 6 gives us 1 so the area of this rectangle has to be 1 sixth the height times the width from 7 to 9 that's going to be 2 units 1 sixth of 2 then equals 1 third now in part D what we are told is that given that Elaine has already spent 4 minutes at the checkout we've got to find the probability that she'll take a total of less than 6 minutes to check out so written down it's this we've got to work out the probability that x is less than 6 okay find the probability she'll take a total of less than 6 minutes but we are given so put a vertical line here we are given that Elaine has already spent 4 minutes at the checkout so we know that x is greater than 4 so this is basically a conditional probability and we should be familiar with how we go about working out conditional probabilities we're quite often given this formula that we should know the probability of an event A given an event B is always equal to the probability of both events happening A and B in other words all divided by the probability of the given event okay so we're just highlight this okay in this box here so a formula that you should be familiar with and we can use this then over here so we want the probability of both these events if you like a and b occurring so if you've got to be less than six but at the same time greater than four then we're looking at the probability that x lies between those two values between four and 6 so that's our a and b if you like and then we divide it by the probability of the given event so in this example it's dividing it by the probability of the given event which is the probability that x is greater than 4 so when it comes to doing this we would need to work out the area bounded by a rectangle between 4 and 6 so if you can imagine 4 and 6 in here then it's just going to be the height of the rectangle which is 1 sixth multiplied by the distance between 4 and 6 which is 2 units and then we're dividing this by the probability being greater than 4 that be the area to the right of 4 so you've got again a height of 1 sixth in your rectangle and the width would be from 4 to 9 a total of 5 units so here you've got 2 sixths divided by 5 sixths and 2 sixths divided by 5 sixths is 2 fifths ok well I hope that's given you an idea if you were uh, stuck on any parts and if you're able to do it and got these answers well done ok